<clears throat> I learn in this letter that Don Peter of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He is very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort, and none of name. A victory is twice itself when the achiever brings home full numbers. I find here that Don Peter hath bestowed much honor upon a young Florentine called Claudio. Much deserved on his part, and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing, in the figure of a lamb, the feats of a lion. Hmm. I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of, that, none of that name, lady. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? I indeed promise thee all of his killings. What is he that you ask, Bernice? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. <laughs> oh, he's returned, and as pleasant as ever he was. You had musty victual, and he hath hoped to eat it. He's a very valiant treacherman. He hath an excellent stomach. And a good soldier to a lady. And a good soldier to a lady. But what is he to a lord? <laughs> a lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. Indeed, he is no less than a stuffed man. <laughs> but, well, for the stuffing, we are all mortal. You must not, sir, mistake my niece. There is a kind of merry war betwixt Sidney Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. He gets nothing by that. In our last conflicts, four out of his five wits went halting off. And now the whole man is governed with one? Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. Is it possible? Very easily possible. He wears his faith but as the fashion of his hat. It ever changes with the next block. I see, lady, the gentleman is not in your books. No, and he were, I would burn my study. <laughs> but I pray you, who is his companion now? Is there no young square who will make the voyage with him to the devil? He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs pleasantly mad. Oh, oh Lord, help the noble Claudio, for if he have caught a fenwick, it will cost him a thousand pounds ere it be cured. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run mad, niece. No, not till the hot January. Don Pedro is She would not have his head on her shoulders for all Mazina, as like him as she is. Wonder why you still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady Disdain? Are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die when she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Why then, courtesy is a turncoat. But it is certain I'm loved of all ladies. Only you accept it. And I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly, I love none. A dear happiness to women that else would have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood. I am of your humor for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Oh, God, keep your ladyship still, not mine, or some gentleman or other shall escape her predestinate scratched face. <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse into her face, such as yours were. Well, you are a rare parent teacher. Uh, a bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse have the speed of your tongue in so good a continuum, but in God's name, I have done. You always end with the jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonato. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my dear friend Leonato hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at the least a month, and he heartily prays that some occasion may detain us longer. 
I dare swear. He is no hypocrite, but plays from his heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Who is it your grace lead on? Benedict, this is not the daughter of Signor Leonardo. I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me, as an honest man should do, for my simple true judgment? Or would you rather have me speak after my custom as being a professed pirate to their sex? I pray you, speak in sober judgment. Well, if faith me thinks she's too low for a high praise, too little for a great praise, and uh, I do not like her. <laughs> Thou thinkest I'm a sport. I pray thee, tell me how thou truly likest her. Would you buy her, that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? <sighs> Yea, in a case to put it into. But speak of this with a sad brow. Come, in what key shall a man take you to go into song? In mine eye, she is the sweetest lady I ever looked upon. <laughs> oh, I can see it without spectacles and I see no such matter. But there's her cousin. That she were not possessed with the fury, that it sees her as much as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intention of her husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, thou hadst sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. Is come to this? Hath not the world one man that wears capital suspicion? Go! Look, the prince has returned to seek you. Here, like you follow not to Leonato's. I would, but your grace will constrain me to tell. I charge thee of thy allegiance. He is in love. With who? Now, mark how short his answer is. With Hero, Leonato's short daughter. Amen, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thoughts. In the faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two troths and faiths, my lord, I spoke mine. And that I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither know how she is able of being loved, nor know how she is worthy. This is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die with it at the stake. Thou most dear an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. And never can maintain his bar but in the force of his will. Because I'll not do them wrong to mistrust any. I'll do myself the right to trust none. And the finest, which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. <laughs> I shall see thee ere I die with pale with love. With anger, with sickness, with hunger, my lord. Not with love. Well, as time shall try, in time the savage bull doth fear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, Pluck off the bull's horns and set them on my forehead, having me violently painted with them, duly signifying underneath. Here lies Benedict the married man. <laughs> if this should ever happen, thou should have been whole man. Nay, if Cupid had not spent all his quiver in menace, thou wilt quake for this shortly. How look for his quake too then? Well, you temperance of the hours. In the meantime, Monsignor Benedict, we'll come to you in I have almost enough batter in me to go on such an ambassage. So, I commit to you. To the true tradition of God, and from my house, if I have it. The 6th of July, your loving friend Benedict. Nay, mock not, mock not. So, farewell. My liege, your highness, now may do me good. My love is thine to teach. Hath thou not have any son, my lord? Not have but hero. She is his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when I went onward in the sand of action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye. That light bud had a rougher task in hand than to drive life into the name of love. But now I have returned, and though all thoughts have their places vacant, coming thronging soft and delicate desires, or prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to war. <laughs> thou wilt be like a lover presently, and tire the hero with the book of birds. If thou dost love for a hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, 
And thou shalt tell her. What was not to this end that thou began to tell so fine a story? How sweetly do you minister for love, that low loves grief by his complexion? I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero and Claudio, and in her bosom I'll unclasp my heart, and take her here prisoner of the force, and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then also to her father will I break, and the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice let us put it presently. that breeds, therefore the sadness is without limits. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I wonder that thou, being as thou sayest thou art, born under Saturn, goest about to apply a moral medicine to a mortifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause, and smile at no man's jest. Eat when I have stomach, and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy, and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man his humor. Yea, but you must not make a full show of this, until you may do without controlment. You have a blade set out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace. Where it is impossible, you should take to root, but by the fair weather that you frame yourself, it is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. In this, though, I cannot be a flattering honest man. It must not be denied, but I am a plain-dealing villain. I am entrusted with a clog and enfranchised with a muzzle. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? What news brought you? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is being royally entertained by Leonardo. And I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. <laughs> Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? What is he for a fool that betrothes himself to unquietness? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio. <laughs> Even he, a proper squire. And who and who? Which way looks he? Mary, on hero. <laughs> the daughter and heir of Leonato. A very foreign marching. How came you to this? Being entertained for perfumer, as I was smoking a musty room, comes me, the prince, and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I with me behind the arras, and there had it agreed upon that the prince should woo hero for himself. And having obtained it, <laughs> Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. 
You are both sure and will assist me. To the dollar, my lord. Let us to the banquet. Their cheer is greater than I am subdued. Would the cook were on my mind. Shall we go prove what's to be done? Well, wait upon your lordship. Mm -hmm. 
you walk above with your friend. So you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing? I am yours for the walk, and especially when I walk away. With me in your company? I may say so when I please. And when please you to say so? When I like your favor. For God defend, loot should be like its case. My advisors follow one's roof. Within the house is show. <laughs> Why then? Your visor should be thatched. Speak low, if you speak low. Well, I would you did not like it. So would not I, for your own sake, for I have many own qualities. Which is one? I say my prayers aloud. God match me with a good dancer. Amen. And God keep him out of my sight when the dance is done. Answer, clerk. No more words. The clerk is answered. I know you well enough. You are Signor Antonio. Uh, <clears throat> at a word, I am not. I know you by the waggling of your head. To tell you the truth, I counterfeit him. You could never do him so ill well, unless you were the very man. You should try and up and down. You're he, you're he. At a word, I am not. Come, come. Do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Can virtue hide itself? Go to mom, you're he. Which is will appear, and there's an end. Do you not tell me who told you so? No, you shall pardon me. Nor will you tell me who you are? Not now. That I was disdainful. Well, this is what Signor Benedict said so. Uh, what's he? I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Can he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? <laughs> Why, he is the prince's jester. A very dull fool, whose only gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but the libertines delight him. And his commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy. For he both pleases men and angers them. And then they laugh at him and beat him. For sure he's in the fleet. How would he have boarded me? Uh, when I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. We must follow the leaders. In every good thing. You know me well, I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. He is enamored on Hero. I pray you, dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. So did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let us to the banquet. Thus outside, in the name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the, with the ears of Claudia. To certain so, the prince woos for himself. Uh, come, Claudia? Nay, yeah, the same. Come, will you go with me? Whither? Even to the next willow about your own business? For the prince hath got your hero. I wish him joy for her. But do you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you, leave me. Oh, now you strike like the blind man. Twas the boy that stole your meat and you beat the post? If it will not be, I will leave you. Alas, poor hurt fowl. He will now creep into the sedges. But that my lady Beatrice know me, and not know me, the prince is fool? Ha! It may be I go on to that title because I am merry. Yea, but I am so apt to do myself wrong. It is the base, though bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and oh so eats me out. Well, I'll be as revenge as I may. Now, senor, where is the count? Did you see him? Troth, my lord, I found him here as melancholy, as a lodge in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace hath got the goodwill of this young lady. So I offered my company to a willow tree to be bind up as being worthy to be whipped. To be whipped? What's his fault? Flat transgression of a schoolboy who, being overwhelmed in finding a bird's nest, shows it to his companion. And he steals it. Well, then we could 
trust your transgression. The transgression is in the stealer. The rod had been made, who he bestowed upon you, who, as I take it, has stolen his bird's nest. I will teach them to sing and restore them to the owner. If their singing answers your saying, my lord, you say honestly. The Lady Beatrice had the quarrel to you. Oh, she? Well, she misused me past the endurance of a block. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that she was the prince's jester, that I was a dull fool. Well, she speaks poniards, and every word stabs. I will not marry her. In fact, all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follows her. Look, here she comes. Oh, my lord, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it to me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Marry once before he won it with me with false dives. Therefore, your grace, you may well say I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. So I should not. He should do me, lest I prove to be the mother of fools. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Why, how now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. How then? Sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil. <laughs> civil. Civil as an orange. And something of that. Jealous complexion. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with your father and his good will obtain. May the day of marriage and God give thee joy. Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count, tis your cue. Silence is the perfect disparage of joy. Lady, as I am yours, you are mine. I give away myself to you and dodge upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let him not speak neither. In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. <laughs> Yea, my lord, I think it. Poor fool, it keeps on the windy side of care. <laughs> My cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth come. Good Lord for alliance, thus goes everyone in the world but I. I shall sit in a corner and cry, hey ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. I would rather have one of your father's gettings. Have your grace near a brother like you. Your father has excellent husbands, if a maid could come by them. Will you have me, lady? <laughs> no, my lord. Uh, unless I might have another one for working days. Your grace is too um, costly to wear every day. But I beseech you, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me. And to be married best becomes you. For out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, sure, my lord. My mother cried. But then there was a star dance, and underneath that, I was born. Cousins, God give you joy. <sighs> well, my child, a pleasant spirited lady. There is little but melancholy element in my world. She is never sad when she sleeps, and not ever sad then. For I've heard my daughter say, she has often dreamed of unhappiness, and waked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She knocks all her wooers out of suit. You are an excellent wife for Benedict. <laughs> oh, Lord, my Lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. County Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Tomorrow, my Lord. Time goes in crutches till love have all its rights. Not till Monday, my dear son, which is hence a just seven night. <laughs> Come, you shake the head at so long a breathing. But I warn thee, Claudio, the time shall not go tell you by us. I will in the interim undertake one of Hercules' labors, 
which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of perfection. <laughs> I would fain have it a match, and I doubt not but to fashion it if you three would but minister me, as I shall give you the direction. My lord, I am for you, though it cost me ten nights walking. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero? I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good husband. And Benedict is not the unhelpfulest husband that I know of. Thus far can I praise him. He is of a noble strain, of approved valor, and confirmed honesty. I will teach you how to humor your cousin, that she shall fall in love with Benedict, and I, with your two helps, will so practice on Benedict, that in despite of his quick wit and queasy stomach, he shall fall in love with Beatrice. If he can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only thou gods. Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. towards him, and whatsoever comes athwart, his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship in your sense how much I am in the favor of Marguerite. The waiting gentlewoman to heal. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out at her lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince. Spare not to tell him he hath wronged this honor and made the renowned Claudio. Whose estimation do you might hold up to a contaminated stale, such a one as hero. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince. <gasps> to vex title. Huh? To honor hero. <gasps> and kill Leonardo. No! <laughs> Look you for any other issue. Only to despite them, I will endeavor anything. Go then. Find your meat hours to draw Don Pedro. And the Count Claudio, alone, tell them that you know that Hero loves me. <gasps> huh? They will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances which I bear no less likelihood than to see me our lady's chamber window. <laughs> Hear me call Margaret, Hero. Hear Margaret to me, Ferraccio. <gasps> huh? and bring them to see us before the intended wedding. For in the meantime, I will so fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent, and there shall appear such seeming truth of Hero's disloyalty, that jealousy shall be called assurance, and all the preparation of the throne. Throw this to what adverse issue it can. I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the work of this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Be you constant in the accusation, for my cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn their day of marriage.
I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, becomes the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. In such a man is Claudio. I have known him when there was no music with him, but the drum and the fife. And now he had to listen to the tabor and the pipe? I have known him when he would walk ten miles a foot to see a good armor. But now he lay ten nights awake, carving the fashion of a new doublet. May I be so converted to see with these eyes? I do not know. I cannot tell. One woman is fair, and yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. But to all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not be in my grace. Ha! The prince amongst your love. I will hide me in the arbor. Come, shall we hear this music? Yeah, hey, my good lord, how still the evening is. I passed on purpose to grace harmony. I see you were about to come to himself. Oh, my lord, the music ended. We'll fit the kid talks with the penny's worth. Come, Bob, sir, we'll hear that song again. Note this before my notes. There's no note of mine that's worth the noting. No notes for Susan noting. Sigh no more, lady, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. One foot in sea and one on shore. To one thing constant never. Then sigh not so, but let them go. And be you blind. And Bonnie converting hope, your sounds of woe into hey, Nani, Nani. Sing no more, sing no more of dumb so dull and heavy, the fraud of men. Was ever so since summer was first leafy, then sigh not so, but let them go and be you blithe and bonnie converting all your sounds of woe into hay. Nani, nani. Bonacho, a great song. An ill singer, my lord. <laughs> no, no. Wait, that singer is fallen up for a shift. When he had been a dog, it would have howled us. They would have hanged him. Yeah, Mary. Does thou hear, Balthazar? I pray thee, get us some excellent music. For tomorrow night, we would have it at the Lady Hebrew's chamber window. The best I can, my lord. Do so. Farewell. Come hither, Leonato. What was it you told me today? That your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Huh? Good God. Oh, I. Stalk on, stalk on. The foul suits. I did never think that lady would love any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so do on Signor Benedict whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Why? What offense of passion shows she? Bait the hook well, the fish will bite. What offense, my lord? You heard my daughter tell you how. She did, indeed. How? How? Pray you. You amaze me. I would have had thought her spirit had been invincible against all sorts of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. He hath pain the infection. Hold it up. Hath she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and swear she never will. That's her torment. Tis true. So your daughter says, Shall I? says she, and so often counted him with scorn. Write to him that I love him. This says she now when she's bidding to write to him. For she'll be up twenty times a night, and there will she sit in her smock till she imprints a sheet of paper. 
my daughter tells us all. Oh, she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, railed at herself that she should be so immodest to write to one that she knew and felt her. Yes, yes. And then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hairs, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. She doth indeed. My daughter says so. And the ecstasy has so much overborne her that my daughter is sometime afeard she would do a desperate outrage to herself. To what end? He would make both sports of it and torment the poor lady worse. It were true that, it were true that Benedict knew of it by, by some other, if she will not discover it. He is very wise. <laughs> and he hath a good outward happiness. Hero surely thinks she will die, but she says she will die, if he love her not, and she will die, ere she make her love not. She doth indeed. Tis very possible he'll scorn it, for the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. And he is a very proper man. <laughs> he did that indeed show some surprise that are like a wit. Yeah, and in my yard, and in, 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 by God, and in my mind, very wise. Shall we go seek Benedict and tell him of her love? No, my lord. Let him wear it out with good counsel. She may wear her heart out first. Let him cool the while. I would wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much unworthy he is, so good a lady. My lord, we walk. Dinner is ready. And if you do not dote upon this, I will never trust my expectations. Let there be the same night's nice breath for her, and that was her daughter and her gentlewoman carry. Let us send her to call him into dinner. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. Love me, why I must be requited. I did never think to marry. I may have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken upon me because I have railed so long against marriage, but doth not the appetite alter? Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she is a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. There's a double meaning in that. If I do not love her, if I do not pity her, then I am a villain. Treasurer's bait. 
So I'm going for Beatrice, who even now is couched in the woodland literature, feeding out my part of the dialogue, and going near her, that her ear lose none of the false sweet bait that we lay for it. No truly Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as the haggards of rocks. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my newly trothed lord. And did they bid you to tell her of it, madame? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them if they loved Benedict to wish him wrestle with affection and never to let Beatrice know of it. What did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full as fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall count upon? Oh, God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man. But nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn right sparkling in her eye, misprising what they look on, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all else matter seems weak. She cannot love, nor take, nor shape, nor project of affection. She is so self-endeared. Sure, I think so, and therefore, certainly it were not what she knew as love, lest she make sport of it. Why, you speak truth. I never yet saw a man how wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backward. If fair-faced, she'd swear the gentleman to be her sister. If tall, a lantel-headed. If low, an agate, very vilely cut. If speaking, why a vein blown by all winds? If silent, then a block moved by none. So turns she every man the wrong side out, and never gives to truth and virtue with simpleness and merit purchaseth. Yet yeah, tell her of it, hear what she'll say. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into error. Oh, she would laugh me out of myself, caress me to death with wit. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. It were a better death to die of mocks, which is just as bad as die of tickling. Sure, sure, such carping is not commendable. But I cannot say anything. You no. Should. Rather, I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passions. And truly, I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. One doth not know how much an ill word may poison liking. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment. Having so swift and excellent a wit as she is surprised to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man of Italy who has accepted my dear Claudio. I pray you be not angry with me, madame. Speaking my fancy, Signor Benedict, for shape, bearing, argument, and valor, goes for most of the for Italy. Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. His accent did earn it, or he had it. When are you met, madame? Why, every day, tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel, which is best to furnish me tomorrow. She slumped. I want you with powder, madame. If it proves so, then loving goes by hats. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps.
Gallant, I'm not as I've been. So say, and thinks you're saddened. I hope he be in love. I am true, and there is no true drop of blood in him to be truly touched with love. If he be sad, he wants money. Well, everyone can master grief, but he that has it, yet say I, he is in love. There is no appearance of fancy in him, unless it be a fancy that he hath two strange disguises. Nay, but I know who loves him. That would I know too. I warrant one that knows him not. And in his own conditions, and despite all that dies for him. Seemingly not so. Come, walk with me. I have studied eight or nine wise words with these hobby horses, must not hear. For my life, to break with Mama Beatrice. Tis even so. Hero and Margaret have by this played their parts of bitches. Then the two bears will not fight one another when they meet. <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. Good then, brother. If your leisure served, I would speak with you. In private? If it please you, if Count Claudio may hear. For what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow? You know he does. I know not that when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not, and let that appear hereafter, and aim better at me by that I know will manifest. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, the lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she, Leonato's hero, your hero, Every man's hero. Disloyal? The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. I could say she were worse. Go but with me tonight. You shall see her chamber window entered. Even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. But it would better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If you dare not trust that you see, confess not that you know. If you will follow me, I will show you enough. And when you have seen more and heard more, proceed accordingly. If there be anything tonight, why I should not marry her tomorrow, there in the congregation where I should wed, I shall shame her. And as I have good for thee to obtain her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. I will disparage her no farther, till you are my witnesses. Bear coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. Oh, damn, twirly turned. O oh, mischief, strangely thwarted. O oh, plague, right well prevented! So will you say when you have seen the sequel. Good 
favored name. To be a well favored man is a gift of fortune, but to write and read comes by nature. Both of which, Master Constable. You have! I need to be your answer. You have thought you to be the most senseless and fit man for the Constable of the Watch. Therefore, bear you the lantern. This is your charge. You shall comprehend all the agreement and bid any man stand in the prince's name. How he will not stand? Why, then take no note of him, but let him go, and presently call the rest of the watch together, and thank God you're of a knave. If he will not stand when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True, and there to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets, for for the watch to talk and to babble is most tolerable not to be endured. We will rather sleep than talk. We know what belongs to a watch. <laughs> Why, you speak like an ancient and most quiet watchman. For I cannot see how sleeping should offend. Only have a care that your bills be not stolen. Well, you are to call, it, you are to call it all the alehouses, and bid those that are drunk get them to bed. How they will not? Why, then leave them alone till they are sober. If they make you not the better answer, you may say they're not the men you took them for. Well, sir. If you need a thief, you may suspect them. By virtue of profits to be no true man. And for such kind of men, the less you meddle or make with them, why the more is for your honesty? If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? Truly, by your office, you may. But I think those that touch pinch will be defiled! The most peaceable way for you, if you do take a thief, is to let him show himself and steal out of your company. And you have always been called a merciful man, partner. Truly, I would not hang a dog by my will, much more a man with any honesty in him. If you hear a child cry out in the night, you must call to the nurse and bid her to still it. How if the nurse be asleep and will not hear us? Why then, depart in peace. And then the child wake her with crying, for the youth will not hear her lamb when he bays, will never answer a calf when he bleats. Tis very true. Well, masters, this is the end of the charge. You, constable, are to present the prince's own person. If you meet the prince at night, you may stay him. Nay, by your lady, that I think I cannot. Five shillings will not. With any man that knows the statutes, he may stay him. True, now without the prince be willing, for indeed the watchers ought to offend no man. And it is an offense to see a man against his will. <laughs> Yea, by your lady, I think it be so. <laughs> <laughs> well, masters, good night. <laughs> and there be any matter what chances. Call up me. Keep your fellows' counsels. And your own, and good night. Come, neighbor. Well, masters, we hear our charge. Let us sit upon this church bench till two, and then to bed. One word more, honest neighbors. I pray you watch about Senor Renata's door. For the wedding being there tomorrow, there is great quarrel tonight. Adieu, be vigilant, I beseech you. Turn up. Conrad, I say. Here, ma. I'm at thy elbow. Master, my elbow itched. I thought there would a scab follow. I'll hold you an answer for that. And now, follow with thy tail. Stand thee close. Then, under this penthouse, for drizzles rain. And I will, like a true drunkard, utter all to thee. Some treason, masters. Yet, stand close. Therefore, now I have earned of Don John a thousand ducats. Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Thou shouldst rather ask, if it were possible, any villainy should be so rich. For when rich villains have need of poor ones, poor ones may make what price they will. I wonder at it. I know that man. I remember his name. Didst thou not hear somebody? No, it was the vein of the house. But know that I have tonight Wood Margaret, by the name of Hero. She leaves me at our Mrs. Trevor window. Bids me a thousand times good night. I tell a tale violent. I should first tell thee how the prince, Claudio, and my master. Planted and placed and possessed by my master Don John, saw far off in the orchard this amiable encounter. Oh. <gasps> huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and thought 
the marvelous hero. Two of them did. The prince and Claudio. But the devil, my master, knew she was Margaret. Probably by Azos, which first possessed them. Probably by a dark knight, which did deceive them. But chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander that Don John had made. Away when Claudio raged. Swore he would meet her as he was appointed the next morning at the temple and before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw or night and send her home again without a husband. We charge you in the prince's name. Sir! Master, master. Call up the right master constable. We have here recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that ever was known in the commonwealth. We are likely to prove a goodly commodity, being taken up to these men's bills. Come, we'll obey you. He eats his meat without grudging, 
and how you may be converted, I know not. But methinks you look with your eyes as other women do. that thy tongue keeps. Not a false scholar. Madame, withdraw. The prince, the Constantine, the Benefit, and Don John are all come to fight your church. <laughs> Help to press me. Good cuz, good Meg, good Ursula. to marry this lady? No. What? Huh? To be married to her, for are you come to marry her? <laughs> <laughs> lady, you come hither to be married to this count? I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any, hero? None, my lord. Know you any, count? I dare make this answer. None. <laughs> or what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do, not knowing what they do. How now? Interjections. Some men be laughing as. <laughs> Stand me by far. Father, will you free an unconstrained soul? Give me this maid, your daughter. As freely, son, as God did give her me. And what have I give you back? Whose worth may count to poise this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless you render her again. Sweet prince, you know me noble thankfulness. There, there, Marco, take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She is but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold, how like a maid she blushes. Would you not swear, or you that see her, that she is a maid by these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, 
not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an improved wanton. Dear my lord, if you in your own proof had vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her... I know what you would say. If I had known her, you'd say that she'd embrace me as husband. No, Leonardo. I know they tempted her with words too large, but as a brother to her sister, showed bashful sincerity and coming in love. And seem I ever otherwise to you? Out on thee! Say me! Or right against it! You're more intemperate in your soul than those Pampanoan that rage in savage sensuality. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored that have gone about to link my dear friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, these things are spoken, and they are true. This looks not like a nuptial. True, oh God. Leonardo, stand out here. Is this the prince? Is this the prince's brother? Is this face heroes? Our eyes are on. Oh, this is so. But what of this, my lord? Let me but move one question to your daughter. And by the fatherly and kindly power that you have in her, bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. Oh, God defend me, how I'm beset. What kind of catechizing call you this? To make your answer truly to your name. <laughs> Is it not Hero? Who can blot thy name with any just reproach? Marry that can Hero. Hero itself can blot out Hero's virtues. What man will you talk with betwixt twelve and one yesternight? If you are a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why then are you no maiden? Leonardo, I'm sorry you must hear. Upon mine honour, myself, my brother in this grievous count, did see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with the ruffian at her chamber window, who hath indeed most like a liberal villain confessed the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. Fie, fie, they are not to be named of my lord, not to be spoke of. There is not chastity enough in language without offence to utter them. Thus, pretty lady, I am very sorry for thy much misgovernment. O oh, hero, what a hero hast thou been, if half thy outward graces have been placed upon thy thoughts and counsel of thy heart. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair, farewell. Thou pure and piety and pious purity, and for this I will lock up all gates of love, and from my eyelids shall conjecture hang, to turn all beauty into thought of harm, and I shall never be more gracious. Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? Why, how now, cousin Hero? Wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light. Smother her spirit so. How doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle, Signor Benedict, prior. Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame that may be wished for. Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Why does not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is printed in her blood? Do not live, hero. Do not ope thine eyes. Sir, sir, be patient. For my part, I'm so tired of wonder, I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is alive. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly, although until last night, I have twelve months been her bedfellow. Confirmed, confirmed. Oh, that a stronger maid which is before barred up with ribs of iron. Would the two princes lie? Would Claudia lie who loved her so that speaking of her foulness washed it with tears? Hands from her, let her die. Hear me a little. For I have only been silent so long and given way unto this course of fortune by noting of the lady. I have marked a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face. A thousand innocent shames and angel whiteness beat away those blushes, and in her eye there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my reading nor my observation, which with experimental seal doth warrant the tenor of my book. Trust not my age, my calling, reverence, nor divinity, if this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. Friar, it cannot be. Why seekest thou then to cover with excuse that which appears in proper nakedness? Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that do accuse me. I know none. My father, prove you that any man conversed with me at hours unmeet, or that I yesternight maintained the change of words with any creature. Refuse me! Hate me! Torture me to death! 
There is some strange misprision in the princes. The two of them have the very bent of honor. And if the wisdom is to be misled in it, the praxis of it lives in John the Bastard, whose spirit toils in the frame of villainy. I know not. If they speak but truth of her, these hands shall tear her. If they wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Pause a while, and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince, is left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in, and publish it that she is dead indeed. Maintain a mourning ostentation, and on your family's old monument hang mournful epithets, and do all rites that appertain unto a burial. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this well carried shall on her behalf change slander to remorse. That is some good, but not for that dream I on this strange course, but on this travail look for greater birth. She dying, as it must so be maintained, upon the instant that she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. For it so falls out that what we have we prize not to the worth whilst we enjoy it. But, being lacked and lost, then we rack the value. Then we find the virtue that possession would not show us whilst it was ours. So will it fare with Claudio. When he shall hear she died upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination, and every lovely organ of her life shall come apparelled in more precious habit, more moving, delicate, and full of life into the eye and prospect of his soul than when she lived indeed. Then will he mourn, if ever love had interest in his liver, and wish he had not so accused her, no, though he thought his accusation true. Let this be so, and doubt not, but success will fashion the event in better shape than I can lay it out in likelihood. But if all aim but this be leveled false, the supposition of the lady's death shall quench the wonder of her infamy. And if it soared not well, you may conceal her, as best befits her wounded reputation, in some reclusive and religious life, out of all eyes, tongues, minds, and injuries. Signor Inato, let the friar advise you. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest toy may lead me. Tis well consented, presently away, for to strange sores strangely they strain the cure. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. Ugh. How much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? Very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It's a man's office, not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as thee. Is not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not. It were possible for me to say I love nothing in the world so well as you. But believe me not. And yet I lie not. I confess nothing. <laughs> Nor I deny nothing. I'm sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce and give me device to it. Why then? God forgive me. What offense you, Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest that I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it? Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. I'm gone, though I'm here. There is no love in you, nay, I pray you let me go. We'll be friends first. <laughs> you dare.
dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved the height of villain? That is slander, scorn, dishonor my kinswoman? Oh God, that I were a man! What? Bear her in hands until they come to take hands, and then, with public accusations, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor! Oh God, that I were a man! I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, be Talk it. with a man out of window, a proper saying. The sweet hero, she is slandered, she's wrong, she's undone. Hear me, be Princes it. and counties, surely a princely testimony, a goodly count, count confessed, a sweet gallant, surely. Hey, oh it. God, that I were a man for his sake! Or that I had a friend to be a man for my sake. I cannot be a man wishing, therefore I will die of him grieving. Think you in your soul that Claudio hath wrong, hero? Yea, so much have I, as I have a thought or soul. Enough! I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will take thy hand, and by this day, Claudio is trying to be a dear cow. If you hear of me, oh, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. So, farewell. Be the malefactors. Mayor, that am I and my partner. Mayor, that certainly we have the exhibition to examine. Which of the offenders are to be examined? Let them come before Master Constable. Yea, Mary. Let them come before me. What is your name, friend? Boracho. Pray write down Boracho. And yours, Sarah? I'm a gentleman, sir. My name is Conrad. Write down. Master Gentleman Conrad. Psh, psh. Master, do you serve God? Yes, sir. We all. Write down. They hope they serve God, and I got first. For God defend, but God should go before such villains. Masters, it is proved already that you're little better than false knaves, and you will go near to be thought so shortly. How answer you for yourselves? Mary, sir, I say we're none. A marvelous witty fellow, I assure you. But I will go about with him. Come hither, sir. A word in here, sir. I say to you, it is not your false names. I say to you, sir, we are none. Well, then stand aside, for God, they're both in jail. Have you written down that there are none? Master Constable, you go not the way to examine. You must call forth the watch at their accusers. Yea, Mary, that's the Ethis way. Let the watch come forth. Masters, I charge you, in the prince's name, accuse these men. This man said, sir, that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Write down, Prince John, a villain. Why does this flat perjury to call prince's brother villain? Pray to fellow. Peace. Acknowledge thy luck. I promise thee. What heard you him say else? Mary, that he had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. That burglaries have always committed. Yea, my master it is. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean upon his words to disgrace hero in front of the whole assembly and not Mary. Oh, God! That will be condemned into everlasting redemption for this! What else? This is all, and this is more, masters, than you can deny. Prince John was this morning secretly stolen away. Hero was in this manner accused, in this very manner refused. 
and upon the grief of this suddenly died, Master Constable, let these men be bound and brought to Leonardo's. I will go before and show them their examination. Come, let them be opinioned. Let them be in their hands. Oh, God's call. Cut my life, where's the Saxon? Let him write down the prince's officer. Coxcomb, come bind them, don't let's bore it. Away, you are an ass. You are an ass. <laughs> Does thou not suspect my place? Does thou not suspect my ears? Oh, that he were here to write me down, an ass. But masters, remember that I am an ass. Though it not be written down, yet forget not that I am an ass. No, thou villain, thou art full of piety. I shall be proved upon thee by good witness. <clears throat> I am a wise fellow, Yay. and which is more, an officer, mm -hmm. and which is more, a householder, a householder, and which is more, as pretty a piece of flesh as any is in Messina. A one that knows the law, go to. And a rich fell enough, go to. And a fellow that hath had losses, and one that hath two gowns, and everything handsome about him. Bring him away. Thus, you will kill yourself, and tis not wisdom thus to second grieve against yourself. I pray thee, seize thy counsel, which falls into mine ears as profitless as water in a sieve. Give not me counsel, nor let no comforter delight mine ear, but such a one whose wrongs do suit with mine. Bring me a father that so loves his child, his joy for his overwhelmed with mine, and bid him seek a patient. Tis all men's office to speak patience to those that ring under the load of sorrow, but no man's virtue nor sufficiency to be so moral when he shall endure the life himself. Therefore, give me no counsel. My griefs cry louder than advertisement. Therein do men from children nothing differ. I pray thee peace. I will be flesh and blood. For there was never yet philosopher that could endure the toothache like patiently, however they have written style of gods, and made a push at chance and sufferance. Yet bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There thou speakest reason. Nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me, here is will I, and that shall Claudia know, so shall the prince and all of them that dost dishonor her. Here come the prince and Claudio, hastily. Good day, good day. Good day, to both of you. Hear you, my lord. We have some haste, Donato. Some haste, Ooh. Lord. Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty Ooh. now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could write himself with quarreling, 
Some of us would lie low. Her wrong, sir. Mary, thou didst wrong me. Thou dissembler. Thou. Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword. I fear thee not. Mary, pursue my hand. If my age went such cause of fear, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Tush, tush, man. Never fleer and jest at me. I speak not like a daughter nor a fool. No, Claudia, to thy head. Thou hast so wronged mine innocent child in me, that I forced slay my reverence by. With gray hairs and bruise in many days, do challenge thee to a trial of a man. I say thou hast belied my innocent child. Thy slander hath gone through and through her heart, and she has buried with her ancestors. Oh, in the tomb where never a scandal slept. Save this at first, framed by thy villainy. <laughs> my villainy? Thine, Claudio. Thine, I say. You say not right, old man. My lord, my lord, I prove it on his body. If he dare despite his nice friends in his act of practice, his mere youth and bloom of lusty Oh, wait, I will not have to do it here. Canst thou so daft me? Thou hast killed my child. If thou kills me, boy, thou shalt kill a man. He shall kill two of us, and men indeed. But that's no matter. Let him kill one first. Win me and wear me. Let him answer me. Come. Follow me, boy. Come, sir boy. Come, follow me, sir boy. I'll whip you from your foining fence. Nay, as I am a gentleman, I will. Brother. Content yourself. God knows I loved my niece. And she is dead, slandered to death by villains that dare as well answer a man as either take a serpent by the tongue. Boys, apes, braggarts, jacks, mix ups. Ah! Brother Anthony. Mm. Hold your content. For Brother Anthony. Do not your meddle. Let me deal in this. Uh. Gentlemen both, we will not wait for patience. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death, but on my honor, she was charged with nothing but what was true and very full of proof. My lord, my lord. I will not hear you. No. Come, brother, away. I will be heard. At Sal, or some of us, will spark for it. Good day, my lord. Welcome, senor. You almost come to part almost afraid. <laughs> We've ha we have had, had our two noses snapped off by two old men without tea. <laughs> no, not to honest brother. What thinkest thou? Had we thought, I thought we should have been too young for them. In a false quarrel, there is no true valor. I came to seek you both. <laughs> for we have been up and down to seek thee. For we are high drift melancholy when fain have it beaten away. Wilt thou use thy whip? This is my scabbard. Shall I draw it? Dost thou wear that bit by thy side? Never any did so. Very many have been beside their wit. I bid thee draw, as we do the minstrels. Draw, to pleasure us. I pray thee, choose another subject. If I'm an honest man, he'll fail. Art thou sick or angry? His staff was broke cross. Give him another. By this light, he changes more and more. I think he'll be angry indeed. If he be, he knows how to turn his griddle. Shall I have a word in your ear? God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. What? I guess not. You have killed a sweet and innocent lady, and her death shall fall heavy on her shoulders. Let me hear you. Well, I will meet you, so I may have a good cheer. What? A feast? A feast? The faith. I thank him. You went amble, sir. It goes easily. I'll tell thee how Beatrice praised thy wits the other day. I said thou hadst a fine wit. True, says she, a fine little one. <laughs> no, said I, a great wit. Right, says she, a great gross one. <laughs> Nay, said I, a good wit. Just, says she, it hurts nobody. Yet at last she concluded with a sigh that I was the properest man in Italy. But when shall we set the savage bull's horns on the sensible Benedict's head? Yea, and text underneath. Here dwells Benedict, the married man. Fail a boy! You know my mind. You make braggers as jest through their blades. 
in which God be saved. Hurt not. Prince, for your many courtesies, I thank you, for I must discontinue your company. Your brother the bastard has fled from Messina, and you have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. For Sir Lockbeer there, he and I shall meet, and until then, peace be with him. He's in earnest. In most profound earnest. And I want you for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee. Most sincerely. What a pretty thing man is when he goes in his hose and doublet and leaves off his wit. But then he's a giant to an ape. But then is an ape a doctor to such a man. What soft you? Did he not say my brother was fled? Why, sir, you must be not to! Hearken off their offense, my lord. Officers! What offense have these men done? Mary, sir, they have committed false reports. Moreover, they have spoken untruths. Secondarily, they are slanders. Sixth and lastly, they have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, they are lying dogs. First, I ask thee what they have done. Thirdly, I ask thee what's their offense. Sixth and lastly, why they are committed. And to conclude, what you lay to their charge? Rightly reason, and in his own division, and by my chop, there's one meaning well suited. What offense have you done, masters, that you are thus bound to your answers? This learned constable is too cunning to be understood. What's your offense? Sweet prince, let me go no farther to my answer. Do you hear me, and let this count kill me? I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms cannot discover, these shallow fools have brought to light. Who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how Don John saw me, Cor Margaret, in hero's garments? How he disgraced her when he should marry her? My villainy they have upon record, which I had rather seal with my death than repeat over to my shame. The lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation. And briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs not the speech like I ran through your blood. I have drank poison whilst you ushered it. But did my brother set thee unto this? Yea, and pay me richly for the practice of it. He's composed and framed of treachery, and fled he is upon this villainy. Sweet hero, thy image not doth appear the right semblance I loved it first. Come! Bring over the plaintiffs! By this time our section hath reformed Signor and out of the matter. And, masters, please do not forget to specify when time and place shall serve that I am an ass. Here, here come Master Signor Renato and the sexton too. Which is a villain? Let me see his eyes that when I note another man like him, I may avoid him. Which of these is he? If you would know your honor, look on me. Art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed my innocent child? Yea, even you know, I alone. No, not so, villain, that belies thyself. Here stand the pair of honorable men, a third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princess, for my daughter's death, recorded with your high and worthy deeds. Twas bravely done, if you bethink you of it. I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself. Impose me to what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet sin I not, but am mistaken. By my soul, nor I. And yet, to satisfy this good old man, I would bend under any heavy weight that he'll enjoin me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter lie. That were impossible. But I pray you both, possess the people in my with you. How innocent she died. And if your love can labor aught inside a mansion, hang her an epitaph upon your view. And hang and sing it to her bones. <laughs> sing it tonight. Tomorrow morning, come you to my house. And since you cannot be my son in law, be it my nephew. My brother has a daughter, almost a copy of my child that's dead. And she alone is heir to both of us. Give her the right you should have given her cousin. And so does my revenge. Oh, no, but sir, your overkindness doth ring tears to me. I 
had you embraced your offer and disposed by the spoils of war, Claudio? Tomorrow then I'll expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. This naughty man shall face the face be brought to Margaret. I believe it's passing on this rock. <laughs> Hired to it by your brother. No, by my soul she was not. Nor need not what she did when she spoke to me. But always have been just and virtuous in anything that I do know by her. Moreover, sir, which indeed is not like her white and black. This plaintiff here, the offender, did indeed call me ass. I beseech you, let me be remembered in his punishment. I beseech you, let me be remembered in his punishment. I thank you for that care and honest pains. Your worship speaks like a most thankful and reverend youth, and I praise God for you. He is for that pains. God save the foundation! Go, I discharge you, and I thank thee. God keep your worship, I wish your worship well. God is for to help. I heartily give you my leave to the Lord. and if I marry me, you may wish. God bless it. Until tomorrow morning, lords. Farewell. Farewell, lords. We look for you tomorrow. We will not fail. Tonight, I will mourn with hero. We'll talk with Margaret Harrow Prince in school with this lewd fellow. Bring you these fellows on. It's about. It knows me. It knows me. Pretty, sweet Mistress Margaret, wouldst thou help me to the speech of Beatrice? Will you then let me a sonnet in praise of my beauty? Uh, in so high a style, Margaret, that no man living shall come over it. For, honestly, thou deservest it. Well, I will call Beatrice to you. The God of love that sits above and knows me and knows me. How pitiful I deserve. No, I was not born under a rhyming planet, nor I cannot woo in festival terms. Stay but till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well now. <laughs> and yet, let me go. Ere I go with that which is with knowing, what has passed between you and Claudio? Only foul words, and therefore I will kiss thee. <laughs> foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noise. Therefore, I will depart and kiss. Thou hast truly frightened the hand out of his right wit. So forceful is thy wit. I must tell thee plainly, Claudio when I go is my challenge. And for which of my first bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? <laughs> for them all together, which maintain so politic a state of evil that they will not admit to any good part to intermingle with them. But for which of my good parts did you first suffer love for? <laughs> suffer love? Why, I get up at that. For I do suffer love. I love thee against my will. In spite of your heart, I think, alas, poor heart. If you 
spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours. I will never love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to it peaceably. <laughs> it appears not in this confession. There is not one wise man among twenty that will praise himself. Tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God, love me, and men, for here comes one in haste. Madame, you must come to your uncle. Your nurse will call her home. It is proven my lady here have been falsely accused. The prince and Claudio might be abused, and Don John is the author of it all, who is fed in God. Will you come presently? We not go hear this name, senor. I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thine eyes. <clears throat> and moreover, I will go with you to thy uncle's. Did I not tell you the lady was innocent? So are the prince and Claudio, and all of them that you heard accused her. I'm glad all things sort so well. And so am I, being faith by us and forced by to call young Claudio to his reckoning for it. Well, daughter, and you gentlemen all, withdraw to a chamber by yourselves, and when I send for you, come to the mask. The prince and Claudio promised by this hour to visit me. You know your office, brother. You must be father to your brother's daughter and give her to him party. Which I will do with confirmed countenance. Friar, I must entreat you for your pain, I think. To do what, senor? To bind me or undo me. One of them. For <laughs> Signor Leonato. I think your niece regards you with an eye of favor. That I, my daughter, love her, tis most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. Besides, we're off, I think you had for me, from Claudio, and the prince. But what's your will? Your answer, sir, is enigmatical. But for my will, my will is your good will, which may stand with ours. For they stay to be conjoined in honorable marriage, in which, Friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help. Here come the prince and Claudio. Good morning to this fair assembly. Good morning, prince. Good morning, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry with my brother's daughter? I'll hold my mind. Call her forth, brother. Here's your fire ready. Good morrow, Benedict. What's the matter? That you have such a February face, so full of frost, of storm, and cloudiness? I think he thinks upon the Sabbath bowl. Tush, fear not. Take a mother reckonings. Which lady must I seize upon? <clears throat> this same is she, and I do give you her. Wait there, she's mine. Sweet, let me see your face. No, that you shall not. So you take her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Will you give me your hand before this holy friar? I am your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. Huh? And when you loved, oh. you were my other husband. No, another hero. Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live, and surely as I do live, I am a maid. <laughs> the former hero, hero that is dead. She died, my lord, but 
false or slander live. All this amazement I can qualify. When after that the holy rites are ended, I'll tell you largely of fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonder seem familiar. Soft and fair, fire. <laughs> Which is Beatrice? I answer to that name. What is your will? <laughs> Do not you love me? Why, no. No more than reason. Trust, why then the prince, your uncle, and Claudio have been deceived. They, they swore you did. Do not you love me? Uh, why? <laughs> Trust, no. No more than reason. Why? Then my cousin, hmm, Margaret and Ursula, have been much deceived, for they did swear you did. They swore you are almost sick for me. They swore that you were almost well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then do not you love me? No, truly not. Only in a friendly recompensation. Come, cousin, I'm sure you love the gentleman. And I will be sworn upon that he loves her. For here is a paper written in his hand, a halting sonnet of his own pure brain, fashioned to be a kiss. And here's another, writ in my cousin's hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affections onto Benedict. Mm -hmm. against their hearts. Come, I will have thee, but by this light, I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this day, I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life. For I was told you were in consumption. Peace, I will stop your mouth. How dost thou, Benedict the married man? For man is a giddy thing. That is my conclusion. <laughs> come, come, we are friends. Air, let us dance. Air, we are married. We'll have dancing afterward. Therefore, first of my words, let us play music. Prince, thou art sad. Get thee away. Get thee away. Strike up, Pipers!
Oh, oh, oh.